Hello, in this video we're going to be talking about general information for the brain. So let's not waste any of your time. Let's get right to it. Now, when we're talking general information for the brain, uh, the, the first thing we want to think about is kind of some directional, and you can see that the rostral, rostral, I mean, when you see a reference to that, that means we're talking like towards the nose. So if we were to say that uh, the frontal lobe is rostral, uh, we could say the cerebellum is caudal, um, or we could say the frontal lobe is rostral, to the cerebrum, the uh, cerebellum is caudal uh, to the frontal lobe, which means towards the tail. Uh, you can see the, the, the size of the weight there. Uh, you wouldn't think that, I mean, you'd think it'd be more, uh, but the material, uh, but the, the, the three, three and a half pounds, and, and matter of fact, there was a television show, oh, late 2000s in there somewhere, uh, it was a medical drama that was huge at the time with uh, all the shows was going on and lawyers too. But anyway, uh, and the title of it was Three Pounds and it was a reference to a neurosurgeon, kind of like a Doctor Strange type before he became Doctor Strange uh, as a neurosurgeon. But you know, the typical uh, cases come in, brain surgeries, saving the patients, all that kind of good stuff. So, But that's a reference to the the weight of a um, uh, brain and the three major portions that this entire series is going to be working around is the cerebrum the cerebellum and the the brain stem of course when we say cerebrum we're really referring to almost the entire upper two-thirds uh, uh, running both the the frontal and the parental areas which will have a direct tie into the skull once we start talking about that when we do the bones but all these areas not only will we be talking about their structures but a major portion of the videos will be spent on function and the function of the brain is as you can imagine is a, a long long list of all the i mean everything that we do comes from the brain in uh some point and one of the challenges you'll have this in this uh this unit is linking functions with the areas that they come from uh, and that's one of the things after after putting all that energy and time into memorizing and remembering these certain areas one of the things that will happen once we dissect brains is you'll open them up and we will we will pin those areas and talk about those areas but it'll be anticlimactic because you there isn't any really thing there that says oh yeah here's this I mean, you're going to see color-coded sections of the of the brain. You're going to see references to each point. But, man, when you open it up, you expect to see a lot more. And that's always one of the interesting things uh, each year uh, with students. All right, so when we're talking cerebrum. Uh, we're really talking that upper two-thirds, as I, as I mentioned. And one of the obvious things... Uh, to notice right away is that longitudinal fissure that goes right down the center uh, and when you uh, when we do dissect brains with the, sheet, with the sheet brains you can literally put your fingers down into that fissure and pull the brain apart and look at both halves and once we're done uh, analyzing the outside we will do that uh, and it's almost a sound just like uh, pulling like maybe a cantaloupe apart. I mean, there is some sound of the of the fleshy inside tearing. Nothing like what a bone would would produce as far as sound. Uh, but there is a little bit about that, almost a fruit-like tearing, maybe a peach or whatever. But looking at uh, the different parts, along with the, the fissure, uh, you've got the GRIs, the the thick folds. I mean, almost intestine looking like. And then, of course, the succuli, the shallow grooves, the part that goes down into there. And then the most interesting part is the corpus callum, 
which is a huge part of the brain and creates that left side affecting the right side, right side affecting the left side stuff, or allows that to happen, I should say. Because at the very bottom of the brain, uh, somewhere in here on the deep inside, is where the corpus callum is. And these are thick, as it says, they're thickener bundles, and it allows the information to pass back and forth. And that's going to be big when it comes to receiving information. That's going to be big when it comes to sending out information. And it's also part of what, uh, as I mentioned, uh, causes that if you know one side of the brain gets injured, it, it affects the kind of the opposite side kind of a thing. So it's a, it plays a part in that. It doesn't necessarily cause that, but it does play a role uh, in that. All right, when we're looking at the cerebellum and the brain stem, again, you can see there in the diagram uh, off the side of there, that's the lower sections, the cerebellum, right back here in the back of the head. You can almost feel that, that knob right there at the very, very back. Okay, it's just right in there uh, behind that. That's your cerebellum. And your cerebellum is huge because a lot of the, a lot of the mental processes uh, that your body, uh, that your brain does in order to get your body to do the things it needs to do uh, are processed through the cerebellum. It's only, as you can see there, it's only a very small part of the overall brain, but a large part of the thinking goes on through the cerebellum. And you can see the numbers there, 10% of the overall volume, but over 50% of the brain neurons uh, are loaded there, located there. And you can see the brain stem. Uh, the brain stem is just right below uh, the major portion, that major front, where it dips down into there. Uh, the brain stem right above the, the where it exits out of the skull and down into the spinal cord. That's where your brain stem is. And of course, of those parts, the midbrain is kind of the top part of that, and then the pons, uh, and then the medulla below that. And it's almost uh, almost like a thigh calf muscle relationship as far as uh, as far as the way it looks but we'll see a picture picture of that but the the thing to mention here because it's going to be brought up a lot uh, in the rest of the videos is the diencephalon it's a it's a larger area uh, that contains as it says there the thalamus and the hypothalamus and we'll see a picture of that on the next on the next screen uh, of those two, but uh, those two play a huge role in what goes on in the body uh, and the things that the the body does to adapt and to make changes. I mean, the brain sends out the messages, uh, but when but when but the action is done by the hypothalamus and the and the thalamus and the pituitary glands uh, after that. But we'll see all that in the next in the next uh, slide, next screen. All right, and here is that uh, picture, this diagram, and this diagram of it. This is not a uh, something that you will end up uh, memorizing unless we talk about it in class uh, early on in the unit and uh, assign that. Uh, but uh, don't want your initial thoughts to be like, "Ooh, I got to memorize all that." Uh, we might uh, get to that point, but uh, uh, it'll be something that we talk about and discuss. So looking at the brain stem, as I mentioned, the midbrain width at the top there, uh, and then the pons, you know, they're kind of that thick, beefy area, almost like your thigh muscle, and then the medulla oblongata down below there, almost like the calf muscle, a little smaller in size as far as a reference point. But right in the center, uh, in that, uh, you got the, the, the big whitish area, uh, that's the corpus callum, that big circular area around there, it's a lighter color. Uh, the outer edge is that kind of that darker peach or pink, maybe you can call it in the wider area. That's the corpus callum. Again, that's where the, the information exchanges sides, goes back and forth between the sides, whether it's coming down from the brain and across and then out, or it's coming up from the sensory across and then up to the brain. But inside of that, 
is the dicephalon that we just referenced. Uh, that houses the hypothalamus and the thalamus that you can see there if you follow the uh, find those words and follow the lines over to the center and of course down below that kind of if the center of this brain where the thalamus the hypothalamus is then if you look kind of like a seven o'clock uh, the pituitary gland hanging down there and kind of a diagonal uh, line those three making up a huge portion of the endocrine system but which we will eventually uh, get to because it does play a huge part in everything uh, that the that the body has to do to keep everything in homeostasis kind of a mode all right so that's our that's our uh, video for brain general information when we come back to there next time we talking about the gray and white matter We'll see you then.